Here's a riddle. What is irresistible to losers, bleeds you dry of all your money, and can destroy your social standing? It's Destiny 2, you incel! The first person looter shooter that has really stood the test of time, especially since, you know, it managed to survive about 10 million different games dubbed Destiny Killers. Destiny has really garnered a community of loyal and diehard fans who love playing the game whenever they get the chance to. Hello. Hey, Plato, you want to play some Destiny 2? Not really. They all love the game, but like all lovers, they can have their moments of weakness, or rather, they don't stop having those moments. No day will go by without some loser nerd complaining about literally anything they can get their hands on. Uh... But they're all wrong. Destiny 2 is a flawless game. It can do no wrong, and I'll defend every decision with my life. Well, except for a couple of things. As the trusty whiteboard said earlier, Destiny 2 will rob you blind. Now you guys might not know this, Destiny is developed by Bungie. You guys probably don't know them. They kind of developed like one of the most influential games of all time, Marathon 2! But in Destiny 2, they released a brand new expansion out of nowhere. Well... Out of nowhere, if you didn't read the list of just a couple leaks on this random website, Bungie's 30th anniversary pack is a whopping 25 bucks for a single dungeon and... Oh yeah, that's literally it. Unless you consider this random rocket launcher from Destiny 1 something of value, I found something profound on the most trustworthy source of information. Reddit. This guy's telling me that an exotic heavy weapon is a waste of an exotic slot, and this is when Xur was selling it back in D1. I just don't see anyone wanting to spend money on something that's considered a waste. But don't worry guys, the monetization doesn't stop there. The launch of D2 was during the peak of loot boxes, although thank god that the stress on loot boxes was not as potent as other titles. They existed, but only for cosmetics, so that these losers can show off their fashion sense to their friends or whatever. Whoa, why are you looking all sexy all of a sudden? It's these armor sets I spent 50 bucks on. Destiny 2's list of controversies is an unironic meme that still blows my mind. One of the first ones I can remember was when they limited all of our XP gains to make sure that we couldn't earn their loot boxes faster than if we were to buy them instead. You know, classic scummy business practices we've all gotten used to by now. What is that fucking blue? You want me to pay you? What? $50 for fucking shiny blue! Fucking shiny blue! But the real meat and potatoes of controversies... No, not that one. We all know no one cares about things like that. But the fact that the DLC that they charged a pretty hefty sum for will not only be free for everyone, but then soon after be removed from the game entirely. They removed the key parts of Destiny 2, starting with the pinnacle of Destiny 2 activities, the raids. They got rid of five really, really good ra- uh, two really, really good raids and two okay raids. And uh, yeah, that's it. That nothing else was lost. Then at the same time, they also decided, hey, let's get rid of like half the strikes and half the Crucible maps. So now we all get to play on the same map five billion times. It's even better the fifth time today. And the uninformed might be thinking, who cares if they got rid of the old maps and strikes as long as they're bringing in new ones. <laughs> They haven't made a Crucible map in a, exactly a 966 days. That's um over two and a half years. They ignored half of their game for about two and a half years. Uh, I love this game. And usually if a video game ignores a huge chunk of their player base like that, they'll usually stop playing the game. But not Destiny 2 players. The game has easily grabbed its players by the throat and hooked them in and addicted them. And there was no time more proven than that than one of the worst displays of modern gaming I have ever seen. Hey look, they're bringing back the hit game mode from Destiny 1 that everyone loved, Trials of Osiris. I sure hope they don't ruin it. What? It's just an ordinary... Sniper rifle. The oh my goodness! It would appear that they ruined it. Cheaters were running rampant, and dear old Bungie did not have an anti-cheat, or rather, they had this foolproof system that always works. Even then, they would still be like, but how can we be sure that they're cheating? But then sometimes, a small glimmer of hope. Hooray, they're banned! I sure hope we won't be seeing them anytime soon. Uh oh Hold on guys, give me a second. Hello? What do you mean you played the same hacker again? We just got them banned! Hmm. Oh. I think I found our problem. Don't worry guys, Bungie announced that they have a brilliant solution to get rid of the cheaters. Anti-cheat- They locked trials behind a paywall. What? Huh? Alright, sure. An 
nice band-aid fix for the time being until they get an anti-cheat up and running would be a perfectly logical thing to think. Except that's what they did after they got their anti-cheat. So all they are really doing is locking their pinnacle PvP endgame behind a paywall. Just for the sake of it, I guess. I haven't run into a single cheater since they implemented Battle Eye anti-cheat, but now my broke friends can't enjoy that with me. Bungie must have realized that they are literally invincible. We know that they murked the other Destiny killers and not only survived them, but toppled them in ratings and player count. I mean, we all know Bungie's legacy is very strong with their mega hit of a video game they got in the past. I mean, besides Besides that, they only did one other somewhat notable thing. They uh, they made a small game that I don't think really a lot of people know about. It's called, it's called Halo, but I, I can't really see it going anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't seem that fun to be honest. I can't really see them doing much with this one. Their magnum opus, Halo, which is a PvP game. So they've earned some street cred for that. In their Destiny venture, however, they have made some mistakes in the PvP area. Bungie doubled down on said mistakes with the belief that they were not mistakes, but instead fat Ws. This is where the clear difference between D2 and Halo is shown. Halo had a pretty significant skill ceiling, which is always helpful in making a good and competitive video game. So let's see what they learned and take a look at what changes Bungie is implementing in the modern day. Sliding will now remove stability and flinch resistance. All right, sure, that might help Dokken Apes require more than two brain cells in order to secure a kill. That might be a worthy sacrifice for the greater good. Airborne efficiency. Oh my god. What did they do? They had an interesting idea where to raise the skill ceiling, they would get rid of aim assist when airborne, so only the true aimbotters could hit their shots, even when flying around like they just started playing Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. But naturally, of course, that's exactly what didn't happen. I literally don't even know how to describe what is happening, but I know it ain't right. It is so bad that this bro with actual literal hacks and aimbot cannot hit his opponent while he's in the air. So it seems that Bungie's true intentions were to lower the skill ceiling, so they nerf sliding and now jumping. So clearly, this is how Bungie intends us to play. They have to be catering to a group of casuals that just like is much worse than like the dad gamers that people usually make fun of. So all in all, I hope for the sake of the game I hold dear that Bungie will learn from their past mistakes and move past each temptation of modern gaming they keep dipping their toes into. But who am I kidding? Destiny 2 players won't do anything drastic enough for them to care. So enjoy it while it lasts, baby. Cause I sure will.